Hi everybody, um, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, parking in Seattle. Um, I'm just going to go through a bunch of different maps, um, starting with the seattle.gov and you can uh, look up uh, this type of web page and you can say for Seattle Department of Transportation maps and data. Um, there's also this one um, from seattle.gov and just a Seattle parking map and it's SDOT slash Seattle parking map. Um, and then there's also this uh, parking angels thing, which kind of gives you some idea of what the parking rates might be. And I liked it just because it had a little bit, uh, the interface was pretty nice. Um, and then there's also this map uh, looking at both the north side and south side. And you can see uh, it's a little bit hard to see the uh, details on that, but uh, we will probably look at that in detail here so you can see. Um, basically, a uh, carpool paid, time zone limited, and uh, no parking zones, as well as uh, these other time limited ones. Um, so uh, we'll go through a lot of these, and uh, I thought I would start off with uh, these two. Probably, probably this map, and I think it was also, or is it? Yeah, this map. So, uh, so basically, there's a. There's kind of a a, 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 a parking, uh, it, it depends on the time of day. So in the morning, um, pretty much uh, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., uh, you have to pay, it's paid parking um, in the, these areas and with a slightly higher rate right in this area right here. So, and you can also see on the university district and there's another spot up here in the morning. Uh, but once you get to uh, midday, um, actually there's another section that goes up and then even this section here uh, but basically it's 50 cents an hour and then to a dollar dollar an hour um, and then at evening times uh, this becomes free this whole section and this is actually quite a big chunk of downtown um, but it's still paid uh, even uh, so this is a 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. right so um but in general uh what i found is that uh in the in the in the areas that are free which is basically these gray areas um so we're basically talking like you know from from here to here is a good 20 minute walk um so you're talking uh you know basically a mile a couple miles uh, just across the front end here, um, and unfortunately it doesn't show the uh, distance. But you, once you get familiar with it, you're gonna kind of see um, what the deal is. So you can park in any of these gray areas, um, and this is includes the north side of, and that's kind of the university district area, um, and that uh, is basically for three days, seventy-two hours. Um, so you can see that. Uh, uh, there, there, there is some kind of, uh, you know, problems down in here. You know, this is pretty heavily industrial zone. This is residential. And what I was a little bit confused about is, is there a parking permit required? So it doesn't look like that unless um, it's specified so you have to read this the street by street signs um, but it looks to me like it's pretty good in most of these so what I'm gonna do is load up this north side why that's loading we can look at this so but in general um, you know you can kind of see that the, the pay, as soon as it stuns with the paid parking um, it becomes pretty parkable up in here so this is a good walk to get to downtown um, and I would say this is up on a hill too. So you kind of got to look at the, uh, I'm going to show you a, uh, let's switch this here to the other map. So on this, this is the whole deal for Seattle, right? So basically the downtown area is paid parking and then there's kind of a little sliver of a spot that changes at nighttime, which is this guy right here. Um, so if you go back to this map, you can kind of see, right? So these are the morning rates. There's a little kind of section right here. Um, and we can go back and try to find that section. So that's the, this is right in the morning. And you can see that 
Oh, geez. So basically, there's a there's an intersection between I. This is I five and I ninety, and I ninety is what I usually. I'm from far away, but I was just kind of wanted to see about where I could park overnight and some other spots like that. So basically, this little spot right in here is actually pretty expensive parking. So they, they do $1 an hour for this. Um, and I'm not even sure where exactly that would start. So it's kind of like a section. Oh, you know what? Actually, it's even closer in. So it's kind of like, yeah, so it's actually just south. So there's this part that comes into Lake Union. So I'll show you this map here, right? So what we're looking for is this is Lake Union, right? So it's, I kind of associate everything with the Lake Union area, and uh, I got a little hotel in here for $100 a night. So, but basically, if you when you look at the other map, you can see. So, basically, if you go straight down from Lake Union, it's kind of in here, which is the more expensive spot for parking. And what I would say is, let's look at so the midday rates go up in, in a little section as well. So if I switch back to this, you can see. So this section is kind of like, if you zoom in, let's see if we can zoom in here. And you can see, I think that might even be, we can find this. So it's kind of right down through, through here. Um, and that looks like Stewart, Virginia. And is that, I'm looking for Pike. <laughs> so it's got Wall Street, here's Pine. Um, and Crescent and then uh, these other guys. So basically it's Lenora Street. So if we go back and we uh, look at this for Lenora Street and it's probably really, there's Pike's Place Market and I didn't see Lenora on there. So, But basically this, this little section in midday kind of becomes, and there's like the highway, it's like actually a little bit south. Here's Union, Pike, Pine. So I think Pine, well, all right. So what I would do is uh, for some reason, this isn't quite matching up with this guy, but basically there's a little sliver in here that becomes more expensive. So what I'm really interested in though is actually where the free parking is. So. Let's let's look at the north side um, and kind of scope this out. So, in general, there's paid parking spot over here um, and a paid spot in here, and then there's vehicle loading zones, and these blue are uh, time limited parking. So basically, you know what you're looking for is something. You know, basically, if you're if you're close to the university. You know, you, you probably have to park more on this side here, bas basically, right? And if you want to be in the downtown area, you can either park in this area or over in here, or possibly even here if you're looking to do cross the bridge. I think this one might be easier to cross. But so let's look at that on a map so you can see where that is. So essentially, what we're looking for here is like hills and other things that might make it pretty difficult to park, right? So this in general area is a lot flatter than the uh, <clears throat> south side, but it makes the south side, but there's still some pretty steep cliffs right as you get into the water. So it makes it pretty tough. So I'm gonna swap back here. So, so there was a little sliver, a paid parking all the, so you, you basically gotta be, you know, I would say, five five blocks plus from the paid parking and you can see that there's like this whole street here that's probably the one that's part of it well that's maybe not it there but so there's basically a uh another bridge that comes over here and then it's right in here somewhere is the paid but it's basically this whole area here is going to be almost impossible to park so if you switch back <coughs> here we were just looking at this that's like right as that so there's like this diagonal bridge <clears throat> and you can see this is the diagonal bridge right here so 
so there is you know it might be it might be tough to kind of maybe find something that's that's quite a walk but you got to pretty much do it so there's basically a spot in here and then maybe back over in here and that actually might be easier back in there so uh so basically on this you can see there's a spot so what i recommend is uh really finding out where you want to go and then kind of grab this map this is pretty much the best map for uh finding out where you can actually park um this one is if you're actually looking to do something right downtown um and it looks like the rates do change after about 10 p.m you can kind of um you know you're pretty much good to go into this area um so you, if you're looking to get over into uh, downtown like pike's place or something you could even park back in here somewhere hopefully on one of the side streets but um but uh I, I would say this one is nice just for um getting some little little green dots in here so you can kind of see where there's some excess spaces that might be available and it shows you kind of parking garages and some other things so and this is the same map as that other one but for some reason it had a little messed up part there so i didn't quite use it um this one is just in general um shows kind of the uh if you want to get like a parking uh for 24 hours what the cost might be i got something right on lake union at the hotel for like i think it was 13 dollars for 24 hours um, and that was from the night that I pulled in to approximately 4 p.m. the next day. So I'll show you where really like Union was. So I was parked right over here, and that was about $12. So, and you can see there's even some here that look like five and seven. And uh, but I don't know if this is only for two hours or what. But and this says um, looks like even more as you get uh, really close. So parking garages might be a complete nightmare. So, but in general. Um, as you zoom in you can see a lot more fine details here so just you basically want to stay entirely away from any of this and focus on the gray so there might be you might even just have to go in around in here so we could kind of try to find that so that's Madison and 23rd Street I can try to zoom out on the other map and find that um, Madison so I'm gonna just type that in you can take a look at this while I'm typing this in so it's just East Madison Street and 23rd Ave Seattle. See if anything comes up and it'll hopefully take me there to that spot. So it is uh, found it. Uh, so let's see where that is. So you can uh, see what this little intersection is here. Uh, so basically can see that uh, this Madison Street is a pretty important one and I was actually trying to find it what I did is I took I think it was like West <coughs> West Lake or something Union and then kind of drove downtown just because I wanted to see downtown and then one took a turn and then wanted to basically find Madison coming out here so you can see that this all this free parking is basically on this side of the hill which is you know you're talking this is a good uh, 20 minutes 40 minutes walk so it uh, and there was some other side streets that are maybe good <clears throat> but uh, basically you have to be on the other side of the hill which is kind of a interesting point to think about so you can see here there's quite a lot of hills and that could be but you're on the top of the hill which isn't so bad but uh, at that point you're kind of talking back in here where the so there's a whole so let's let's look back at here this thing so you can see so basically on this where we're looking at this whole kind of area and then in here you can see there's some fine little details back in here where there might be possibilities um and i'm gonna just get rid of that one that wasn't too helpful um but um and actually there might be even some options over here and I actually really enjoyed the walk. Excuse me. Um, late at night, just along this road, and it looked like it kind of thinned out right at this bridge. And actually, I saw people parking. And it is a nice little walk just along the water here. And there's like a major cliff up on the hill, so there's uh, residential up here, but there's even a paid 
time limited parking up there. Um, but we might be able to uh, look at where this starts. So this this right here looks like uh, so that's Aloha Street and uh, Fifth Avenue. So let's try to find that Aloha Street. Fifth, and see what that finds. And it's taking me over there. So I did find it, and I'll switch this over. Sorry about this, guys. Okay, so let me see. It's kind of uh, loading up a lot of the imagery here, so it may help to. Uh... Okay, so basically, what this means is that. So if you remember this part here, it's basically. We're looking right at this part here so it's like this parking where does the parking start right at that spot so we can kind of zoom in here so that's actually a pretty nice spot to park and I, I think a lot of people said they liked living up on the hill here and it looks like you might be able to uh, indeed find some parking right there so where I was staying in my hotel is like right back in here somewhere and Oh, it was nice to walk over here, but this looks like a really steep hill, like no chance to drive from here to here. But <clears throat> that actually might be my favorite spot just because um, kind of a close little walk to the Space Needle. And uh, But um, let's see if we can still try and load up some of the housing and all that. It's a lot of detail. Um, but <clears throat> so on that note, uh, that spot looks pretty good um, so let's just switch back to the other map so you can kind of see so basically where we're at let's just zoom out so you can see that since that's a pretty sweet spot pretty good area so all in here is right so it's not quite as far as this whole region over here <clears throat> and in fact there may be spots up in here but it didn't look like that to me on the uh, <clears throat> map so there was a lot of no parking, which is, uh, I think they do like one ways. And then I'm not even sure what this RPZ means. <clears throat> Might be a required permit or something. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so basically that spot looks like, so basically it's right over there is kind of <clears throat> the uh, parking spot area. Um, and then there may be, it looks like this Aloha runs all the way over to here. So, so again, the other one was Madison and 23rd. And if you want to see, that's just, it's just a nicer walk through here. But then there is, I don't know, there's maybe some nice things. This is up on uh, near Capitol Hill or something. But, um, and actually I was looking at apartments in downtown. And in general, there was a cheap spot right here on the south side kind of but uh, might be some parking back in here so let's just look at this spot right here as a possible starting point so i think right in here holgate south holgate and 16th ab maybe don't know if that goes through but so it's kind of loading in here but it doesn't show the name of that street golf road so it's so it's Gulf Road. So this is 12th Ave. So it's almost off of this 12th Ave here. And then uh, let's look at this 12th Ave, Gulf Road, and State Street. So while you're studying that, I'll zoom out a little bit more. And I'll see this. So I'm going to look for Gulf Road and State Street, Seattle. Let's see if I can find it. And that's going to be right on the south side hopefully oh geez did not find it so let's see so it was actually golf road south so let's see if we can find that golf road south and 16th let's see if that mm, nothing so uh let's see if we can just find out where that is so Ooh, geez, that looks, I see what's going on now. So there's actually a very steep hill here. I'll show you on the map. So I think I found Gulf Road here. So actually this area 
it's kind of like the there's a little bit of residential parking up here but this street might be uh uh, might be pretty tough to get in and out of this spot, but um, can you walk to downtown from there? Certainly. Um, and uh, <clears throat> whether or not this is a... So there's a weird little hill here in Seattle. Um, so actually, I kind of like this. I, I kind of like the... just. Uh, it's a little bit of a hike, so you might have to climb up that little hill i never even knew about this hill so just uh just cruise around 90 and didn't even notice it but but there is a little road that heads up into there and this turns this is golf road that turns into 12th i don't know if you can see that on the map but this little road so there's that like little residential spot so let's see if we can find any other thing on the map so it looks like there is some residential in here or just regular parking and that would be all right but you're really walking through an industrial zone and i kind of like the idea of just walking through an industrial zone as you think about work um because there's a lot of i used to do a shipping industry it might be fun to just park right over in here so actually this is atlantic it looks like atlantic sixth avenue south so i think i found it already on here so if you look at this, this I'm gonna zoom out so you can see. It's gonna load in everything. So, um, <clears throat> and why this is loading, I'm gonna switch over to the other map. So, Sixth Avenue South, right in here, there is some parking, and actually that's super freaking close. But I imagine this really fills up in this area, and you can kind of see maybe there's parking maybe there's not so a train comes in there it could be a complete nightmare um because it's uh, a lot of people might try to park in that spot but uh so it's looking like the vast majority of the parking is out in here and kind of here um and then there is some parking here and then maybe off over in here and that's just taking a tremendous amount of time to load all the imagery sorry um so let's just zoom out and look at the whole situation and kind of compare these two maps so on this i'm not sure why it loaded all these p for maybe there's garages and lots here but you can see that uh, that spot was pretty good there's maybe this little hill if you just want to park on the hill to see what it's like and there's maybe this spot in here and then actually right in here is probably better. So that's like 19th Ave. And we can kind of look at that just to see. 19th Ave on the map is kind of, let's see if we can look at that. So 19th Ave is another spot. So anyway, at this point, I'm just going to leave it to you. And uh, you can take a look at everything in terms of the parking map. I think this is pretty much the best map of uh, Seattle.gov, which is just uh, great little details on this. So it's uh, just Seattle.gov slash SDOT in capitals, and then just Seattle parking map slash, and then I'm not sure why it has an X at the end. Even I think I just typed that in on accident. Uh, but yeah, so don't use the X. But, and this can kind of give you the details. You have to zoom in. It kind of is loading slow. and different kinds of things um and unfortunately it doesn't really include everything from the uh, main map but hope you've enjoyed it uh i got a lot more interesting things i'm thinking about but i just was looking for like a nice little spot i i usually drive in from idaho and i'm uh, thinking of uh, trying to get a boat in downtown seattle somewhere sharing a boat with some people uh, maybe going on a few camping trips in the islands and uh, maybe just renting a hotel or uh, visiting some friends or possibly even getting an apartment. Um, so I just kind of wanted to know like where I could park for a long period of time while I was investigating the city. And it looks like if I were to do this, it might be fun because I'm driving in a 90 just to uh, try this up here and maybe this spot as desperation, but actually maybe just drive through the city and then park somewhere over here on the, this area. I think this is called the... Uh,
I forgot the name of it, uh, but there's it's a little area over there. So, uh, but uh, certainly, um, certainly there's a lot of spots. Um, Bellevue's a whole nother different place. It looked pretty tough to park in, um, but there is some. There's a lot of private streets and different things going on over there, but. But in general, I think this pretty much covers the entire situation for uh, parking in Seattle. Um, I would definitely look at that uh, other Seattle map, um, this guy here, and just uh, go through it. And Although it does take a little while to load and uh, doesn't always seem to show you the, the details. But, uh, but yeah, just take a look. Um, also, what I'd recommend is uh, the uh, Google, Google has a... Uh, a, a traffic kind of map um, I can let me pause this I can show you the traffic um, so here's the traffic map I was looking at this earlier uh, they used to have it in 3d view I don't know what's going on with Google nowadays but I noticed that Tuesday traffic is slightly worse than Monday traffic and also evening traffic is for sure a lot better so basically let's let's look at when the evening traffic starts so on a Tuesday Looked to me the worst, and at like six o'clock looked terrible. So if you look at Bellevue, looks terrible. I'm gonna zoom in and see what we can see. It's kind of nice to look at the whole thing, um, but um, for the sake of this video, we're gonna see what we can do. So it looks pretty bad at four o'clock. I mean, the north side looks terrible, and honestly, I, I drove down here uh, to Tacoma, and I drove north one time. But it's looking like the south. It was bad going. It's a lot of construction. But you can see on the south, heading down to Tacoma, it looks really bad. Um, this is southbound on I-5. So southbound in general looks terrible. But in general, all so I think what's going on is there's a backup. I, I, I don't know. It's just going south right in here is a major jam. So that's, and, and look at this. I, I don't know what this is. This is showing 2 o'clock pretty bad so even on a tuesday so southbound is just a nightmare on uh the road you can see i i, I cruised up north and it was pretty smooth on i-5 uh when i did it because i was heading up to anna cortez area so you can see at like 12 o'clock it's okay so but even on these side streets forget it at 12 so and you can see let's go back here because Tuesday was the worst day. So basically, you're at 10 o'clock right now, I think 8 o'clock. So the ironic thing, the crazy thing about traffic in Seattle is uh, like the mornings are not bad. If you did Chicago or New York, it's a nightmare. So this is really bad, but it could be a lot worse. So... You can see that uh, eight o'clock in the morning. So this is northbound. So a lot of people heading north. Kind of this could be this could be a good from here to here could be an hour. So that's 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 a nightmare scenario. And even this this is northbound heading into Bellevue. So a lot of people may be living out in here and heading up north or even further south. So it's it's almost like you gotta live up on this side if you want to be heading in but even that's bad it's just it's just certain areas so basically bellevue is bad so i think it's best to look at the worst case scenario which is basically like six o'clock on a tuesday and that could and it looks like it even cleans up at around six five i don't know it's maybe taking time to load but uh but yeah so around six clock if you look at this in here you can start to see so this would be in america we drive on the right side of the road so you can see right side so heading into bellevue so this would be if you're heading out of bellevue i don't know what's going on oh typical traffic yeah you got to make sure you set the typical traffic as well so uh but here you can say that a lot of people are trying to head out of Bellevue at like six o'clock and then head down to Renton or something. So that's a nightmare scenario. And there's just a ton of traffic up in here. So 
in essence, this would be the worst part. Of the north side of Seattle was suburbia. It was terrible. So I, I think what's going on is a lot. They're trying to build a train up and through here as well. And uh, yeah, it's when I was on I-5, I was just, I think it started to slow down in a couple spots here, but this is the worst day experience. So, but in general, you can see that the traffic probably is in the middle point here. So that's kind of heading south. It's hard to say. So southbound is slower. Maybe um, these are pretty fast. No, I actually did notice that this road out in here is pretty fast, but I don't want to tell you about that. But uh, Tacoma, you can see heading uh, kind of into Tacoma is getting pretty slow at around. So these guys might have left. I don't know. It's just it's just terrible to think about the traffic. So in the in general, uh, six o'clock is going to be the bad situation. I'm just trying to think. So you can kind of you can kind of see that. So I was on ninety and that was pretty fast, but it, I went up to Bellevue to just kind of investigate. Uh, what the situation was and there's a little bit of a problem here as you change because you got to take 405 but you can also take this which might be a toll road i'm not sure what the situation is there but so basically um southbound is tough here um i think that's the main thing to be concerned about is i5 um but uh there is also this camera map you can kind of see what's the situation looks like and I think I can just click on this and they can give you the live kind of data but this is from their website which might actually be better than see uh, then uh, the uh, see if I can zoom out so they don't even show Seattle that's just uh, Washington State Department of Transportation you don't have Seattle on here I don't know what's wrong with you guys but uh, got to go to Google. So that basically the Washington Department of Transportation has this part, doesn't have this part. So, but this this road here is a very interesting road. Um, I think I drove it on this part. So you got to really think about where you're crossing here, right? And, um, you know, we're looking at the worst case scenario here, right? So basically... You can see that uh, as you're getting out of Seattle. So this is all coming into Seattle. So why this is slow, maybe be reverse commute. I have no idea why that would be. So I think it's just tough getting on and off the roads here. So you can see that heading south is pretty fast, actually. So yeah, I, I would say in general, um, yeah, this part of southbound is all right. It heads towards the airport. So let's just look at other days just as a backup question. And I'm really sorry this is loading so slowly sometimes. I don't know what's up with my internet. But uh, you can see certain days, Wednesday. But it's southbound. Yeah, so actually Saturday really opened up and was not too bad. So you can see there. This will be Saturday. So Sunday as well. You can see even better. And then Monday. So I don't know. I saw Tuesday bad, but it looks like Monday. Glad I checked check this. But so right in here, pretty major traffic jam on I-5. And I could see what would be happening here. So basically, you're trying to get, this is the downtown. And maybe you're trying to get on right here. So it's almost like, you, this whole area would be very slow. So, and in Chicago, when it's red, I'm familiar with this, is that it's like you're stopped in dead traffic. So, and yellow is not nice either. So, basically, this part in here, so it's like you hop on, just getting on here is going to slow down everything else out just up to here, and it actually even backs up back to there. So, Southbound, so a lot of people are trying to head south, and then northbound maybe isn't as bad, which is kind of strange, right? So we saw northbound problems. So northbound, and it is kind of changing into suburbia up in north. So 
I don't know what I was saying before, but it looks like all this data is saying just hop on the northbound. And the bridges look clear too, so you could easily get out. But so if you can do like northbound, so it's just southbound. Man, so it, it, I'm just also thinking about where I'd, where I'd want to live and work. And uh, I, I don't want to drive, but it, it is nice if you can go fast, then there's no problem. So southbound is in general the, the problem here on just about every thing, right? So this is 6 o'clock. Now let's go. I'm not going to check that yet because it takes so long to load. But So you could pretty much make it. Once you get to downtown and head out to here, University District, that could be pretty good. So if you if you had to go home and you lived over in the University District or something and you worked downtown or something, so that might be all right. But uh, so let's see if we can go back to the eight. I want to do the nine a.m. question. So so let's look at uh, nine a.m. on a Monday and just compare. So it looks like northbound. So it's all this southbound stuff. So a lot of people, I don't know. So it could be from the airport. It could be a lot of things. So in general, the south side of Seattle has the uh, problems. But then once you get back into here, it's a nightmare. So it's almost like, forget it. Like there's so much suburban stuff back here. But I don't know. I mean... Yeah, that's pretty bad. So there is this Alaskan highway. Um, I mean, it is nice to drive like one time through here, but if you have to do it every day, forget it. So on a Monday, it's looking like driving in in the morning. You're, you're, this could be one hour, two hours. Well, I, I don't even know. That's Let's just say if it's stopped up, it could be bad. So, um, And then Tuesday, maybe similar. Um, but make sure you get this traffic. I don't know. It's probably not even loaded on any of these. I'll just check the Thursday. It's pretty similar. Friday. So there's little streets in here that might be interesting, but you can see. So in the morning, yeah, if you take 90 in and you got an interchange, so it's this 90 interchange, and you're just at a halt. And it's surprising that this interchange doesn't hit. See, you're almost better off just cruising in on this road. If you gotta get so living over here in Medina is a little easier. But so South Side is terrible. Could be a lot worse. There's so this is all driving in. So a lot of people living on the South Side. So that commute. Um, so as we zoom out, let's see what we can see about the entire system for a Monday. So this is the entire area, and you can see, again, this is heading in. There's just too many. Why? It must be affordability reasons. And there's just a lot of stuff coming up from um, Tacoma, and the capital is, is Olympia. But these two, having these two big cities down here means that some guys just try to commute into Seattle. And the north is just clear, so good to know. Um, but yeah, I, I just didn't like the feel when I was got up into here. I was, it, it's, it's very clear to me that this is becoming a big suburban sprawl on the north side. And this is kind of uh, more complex and interesting. You saw that from the 3D view. So let's... Let's go back to the 3D view so we can see on this. So in general, it's kind of hard to see, but remember there was this big hill here and 90. So, you know, typically the traffic jam is like in here on this I-5 piece. Right in here is bad. So if you can avoid that at all costs. So what that could mean is essentially you know, there, there's some new companies kind of coming in here. I'm like, I like Lake Union better than downtown anyway. But uh, but where the heck would you park with that many traffic, with that much traffic back up? You'd have to have a lot of parking. So that means that these areas that we were discussing are probably worse. And then the better parking, probably right over here anyway, um, or maybe even here or even on this side. 
Um, and in the future, they're, I think they're going to be having a train that runs across. Um, but um, anyway, I think that's about all I'm going to talk about. But just go to this map. I'm going to put the link in the uh, description. Um, but uh, I hope you really enjoyed the whole discussion. Um, if you're having trouble, you can't do this. So with Google Earth, it's, you have to download this to get this version. You can get the mountains and you can kind of see what's all going on. And um, I dimmed the uh, thing and, you know, a lot of people could even, you know, this is all the way from Portland. So that's kind of this within the same reach of Seattle. No, I'm out here in Idaho a bit. Uh, but basically it's like five hours and it's not too bad, but I don't do that. I'm trying to do that almost never. So, um, for environmental reasons and a lot of other reasons, but, um, but you can kind of see, you know, basically, um, you know, it's the airports here. You got the Portland airport, Seattle airport, and, uh, the airport that I am at is out in here. It doesn't show it, but, uh, it's basically, Ninety dollars to fly um, from here to here, so you can, and then it's another twenty dollars to get to Portland, so you can go from you know, where I live out to uh, Seattle. Give me some prices on that, but um, but if you want to do the uh, actual uh, map of this, you gotta go to Google's page and then uh, just search for a traffic map. I don't like how they have this now. I wish it was more in three D view. It was way more fun to use. And you can kind of see as you zoom out here, I think they even delete it in a moment. But, uh, you know, it just shows these major highways. Um, so, you know, it can ruin an entire trip, um, you know, having uh, bad traffic when you arrive. So in general, it looked like, you know, if you're arriving in the evening, that's not a good situation for you. Um, you know, perhaps the best time is around 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Something like that looked to be better. And you can even see up in Vancouver, and this looks like a nightmare out in here too, uh, up in Canada. So that's getting scary. Um, but um, uh, but yeah, I hope I hope it's been super helpful. Um, I would say personally, I learned a lot about this South Side here, and uh, you know, six o'clock. Um, but this is this crazy little. Um, six o'clock shows like people trying to drive in here. So maybe that is all from this backup. So once, he, so it's this is actually not people trying to drive in, but people trying to get out of the city just has caused a huge. So there must be a major problem right in here in terms of the uh, on ramp in downtown, um, and. Uh, they may be able to uh, do something about that. Um, they're doing huge projects. I mean, I wonder, can't they just... The problem is it's hilly and very difficult. We can probably even find the exact street um, that it's difficult to get on. Um, but uh, in downtown, you can kind of start to see there's this one little street in here near... Uh, just kind of turn in here and getting on. So, yeah, it's basically right there. It's probably their, the main problem, but... Um, you know, if you live out in these other neighborhoods, it'd be worthwhile to check that out. Um, and uh, what I would say is, uh, originally, you know, this discussion is primarily about uh, parking, um, but I think it's not complete without looking at the. Uh, so this is I five running through here, and this was ninety. So basically, most of the traffic problems are on this in the south side, and it really is bad. So heading southbound. You know, or heading northbound from the south could be a problem, like in the morning, right, or something like that. And then if you're going to park, everyone's probably trying to, try to get off here and basically be downtown. So, uh, and that's just because there's more cities and more people living in the south is basically my analysis of this. There's up north is Canada. I like it up north. Um, I live in a rural community. It's great living in rural areas, but the problem is that, man, this, when I drove I-5, it's turning into like suburbia here, and you got all these, I'm not gonna name specific stores, but um, a lot of stores that uh, everyone are, are just around the country that have just kind of devastated the country because they're just plain old normal stores that, uh, not uh, smaller community stores that looked interesting. So, 
but uh, but there is parking back in here, which is great. I guess that's uh, Lake Union area. Um, and I actually think that it would be fun to just uh, actually do a little bit more of a walk and uh, try to uh, even back in here might be fun because then you think about if you park up here, the problem is if you're coming from the south, which most people are, then they just want to park here, basically, which we looked at. But it'd be nice to just find out a place to live, possibly in here. But honestly, with the traffic jams, I hate that. So I think what happens is that people fear this traffic and they think, oh, anything but this traffic. And then they get into this traffic. And it's just as bad to get home here can be just as bad, like all these, this, this whole area. Um, so if you looked on the uh, other you know, satellite view. Um, but the parking situation, I mean, there's just tons and tons of parking, but you got basically 72 hours um, to park. And, uh, you know, from there, you know, these green areas are all paid, it looks like, in this particular map. Um, and um, this map was actually pretty helpful, too. This is ArcGIS map and it shows you some details you can see these evening rates and so on um and uh that's map so uh but uh yeah let me know what you think i'll post the links and uh hopefully it will help you and uh let me know what kind of questions or ideas you have i'm interested in all kinds of topics working with people in seattle if you have some kind of cool idea project um let me know maybe i can help you out um and uh see you later